and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys and what has been another successful weekend for Barca. We're going to be talking today more about that win over Las Palmas, some of the big performances in that game and some of the takeaways that we can have with Xavi Sucha. Once again a big topic in today's video because we are going to be looking ahead to the PSG first leg. That is on the horizon now. The UCL is coming and on that topic as well we are going to have today a full injury update with plenty of good news right now coming Barca's way. It's all coming up for you. Sit back, relax and enjoy and let's do this. Because I do want to give several shout outs here on another special weekend. There's a super thanks coming in from Romania who has been watching the channel for many, many years now. We've also got two super thanks here from California and another one from Norway. And I've got to say guys, it's absolutely amazing here. This is what I always dream of when I created this channel in the first place to make it a community here where no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you're watching Barca from, we can all experience it together. We can all be close by even if we are far away. So absolutely amazing there with the support coming in. And I've got to say guys, looking at where we are right now with Barca, that win last night over Las Palmas, looking at the calendar, it's a strange feeling right now because we've just had the international break. We had a long break there that it felt like. We waited for Barca to come back. We played last night and now we've got another break. You know, it's 11 days in between the games there. The game against Las Palmas, then PSG and that's our next game now. PSG a week on Wednesday and that's what we're going to be building up to on the channel. That is what we're going to be getting excited about every single day. What are we going to do in that game? How are we going to approach it? What do we need to do to win? It's going to be a really intense time. I cannot wait and that is why I was so happy that on Saturday Barca were able to come back from the break, get the important win only by a goal but it was important there to keep that winning feeling going we've now made it four wins in a row the confidence is there the momentum is there we continued that yesterday and that is the feeling that we have to carry in with us now against PSG and I've got to give a shout out as well to Oscar Hernandez who has now overseen six Barcelona games this season in Xavi's absence of course and he has won Every single one of them. Oscar Hernandez has a 100% record. And now we're understanding why. The dressing room are calling him Oscar Klopp. This man has got something special. And he will indeed be in charge once again for our next La Liga game against Cadiz. But I want to talk here about Rafinha. I want to talk here about the game, you know, who impressed, who maybe had more to give. And I think with Rafinha, it was very, very clear once again yesterday for me when there is space in behind. Because the way Las Palmas started the game, like we said, they came out and played. They left space in behind their defence. When there's space... Rafinha can play wide, he can play on the right, he can even play, if needed, as we saw yesterday, on the left, and when there's space to be exploited, he can do that. He was making some really good runs in behind, he was getting joy, he drew the red card from Las Palmas, but when it's a deep block then, as the game changed, after they got that red card, Las Palmas dropped really, really deep, and when there's no space in behind then, though, for me, Rafinha cannot play wide. That is a very, very different game for him. He is not good enough in one versus ones, he is not good enough in tight spaces for me in wide areas to be effective I think you see that very very clearly in a game like yesterday and when you then move him centrally though it's a different story again because I think against a deep block Rafinha in a central area is much much more effective making those runs from deep as he did for the goal they did not see it coming they were not expecting that kind of run in behind them and they can't pick him up so I think when there's space in behind Rafinha can do a job wide he can certainly have opportunities in that role but when there isn't the space there up against those deeper blocks he's much more effective in field in a more central role and I'm really glad that we're starting to use him in that way and of course we have to mention as well today guys Zhao Felix and I just want to say this kind of game this kind of action from him this is why Barca want to keep him next season because he does have the ability and none of us can deny it to be the match winner he does have the ability there to be a game changer because not many players players can do what he did yesterday, whereby you come on and one moment from you, one bit of genius, tip the game in Barca's favour. And you need to have players in your team who've got that kind of quality. But on the other hand as well, 
it's what Barca need and want to see more of from João Felix. They want to see him come on. They want to see him play every single minute with that kind of energy, with that kind of hunger, and ultimately to keep his focus every minute that he's on the field to really apply himself in the best way because he was brilliant yesterday when he came on. He really did change the game. He had so many exciting moments, but he still should have scored. You know, you get that chance in the box. You've got to be focused. You've got to be concentrated. Put it away. Be clinical. Be ruthless. And that is why there is still definitely a higher level that Xiao Felix can go to. There is definitely still more that you can get out of the talent that he has. And that is why Barca are looking at next season. They're thinking there's still more in there. There's still more that we can get out of him. And the real hope is that they can see all of this magic on a more consistent basis. But speaking indeed about consistency, we must talk here, and he deserves this mention by far. It's Il Guy Gundawan, guys, because I think throughout the season, he has been certainly one of Barca's most consistent players in the team. And again yesterday, I think you just see the quality that he has on the ball, his vision, his ability there to just time everything absolutely perfectly. You look at a game like yesterday, again, against a deep block for most of the game, it's tricky to find a way through. It's difficult there to pick the right pass, to unlock the defence, and I just think with him, he has such elegance on the ball, because certainly there, he can receive it on the edge of the opponent's box. He's looking, he's waiting, and a lot of the time, he will take his time. He will do it all in his own time. He will twist, he will turn, he will wait for runs, and he will release the ball at the absolute perfect moment there. Not a second too soon, not a second too late. With Gundogan, it is always absolutely spot on, and he did that two or three times in yesterday's game to really pick Las Palmas apart, and that's the kind of thing, by the way, that Sergio Busquets used to be so, so good at in this team there. You need somebody within Barcelona who knows when to play the ball, who can see a pass, who can execute it absolutely perfectly. And I think as well, guys, considering how many minutes Ilkay Gundogan has had to play in this midfield, not only for Barca, he's also played a lot of games as well for Germany this season. And given the demands that have been on his shoulders, in his first season as well, by the way, he has done so, so well. He has coped with that workload absolutely fantastically. And you wouldn't expect anything else. He's so experienced. He is such an influential leader as well in the dressing room. And I really cannot praise him enough right now. But that is also why there will be some element of concern at Barca because he was, of course, booked in yesterday's game. Very unhappy that he was about that, and rightly so. But he is now at risk of suspension. If he got a yellow card against Cadiz, he would miss El Clasico. And we know how important that game is for the whole team. And Gundogan want to be there. He really will want to play and perform against Real Madrid. So I wouldn't be surprised there, looking at that Cadiz game, if Gundogan finally got some rest. That will be in between the PSG games as well. So that could be a nicely timed rest there for him because we cannot afford for him to be suspended. And with La Liga referees, you can never guarantee anything. If you put him out there, he will be at risk. Make no mistake about that. So I'm thinking there that Gundogan may indeed sit out that game against Cadiz. But speaking there about suspensions indeed, it doesn't end there right now when it comes to suspensions in La Liga for Barca because Robert Lewandowski, he will miss the next game. Because I thought it was really curious actually when Lewandowski was sub there with 10 minutes to go in the game, he looked absolutely furious. He looked over to the bench to say, no way, no way am I coming off. I don't want to. I cannot believe that I'm coming off. And you saw the way that he walked off so incredibly slow there, like he was absolutely fuming. And then he got booked for his trouble. And that meant that he missed the next game entirely. So he will not play now against Cadiz. And I'm kind of wondering in the back of my mind here, was that a strategic booking there? Because again, he would have been at risk. If he didn't get booked now, he would have been one away from that suspension ahead of the Classico. And Lewandowski now conveniently will miss that game against Cadiz and be fine to play against Real Madrid. So maybe there, there was more to that yellow card than meets the eye. And also as well, João Cancelo and Inigo Martinez, they were also booked against Las Palmas, and they will also miss that game against Cadiz. So Barca right now looking a bit light ahead of that Cadiz game, which again, let me just say, it falls very conveniently in between those two PSG legs. So that will be a game maybe that Barca will look to rotate, but it still might be an important game in the title race. But then we do move on to the man who is in charge of it all right now, Xavi Hernandez. And I often get so many different questions here about Xavi's future here, whether it's the 
decision is likely to change. Would we like to see Xavi stay at the club? Is it too early to sort of decide either way? And you can see right here, do you think there's another coach that could come in and give La Masia the priority that Xavi has? Do you believe that a new coach at Barca would indeed put their faith in the youngsters? You can certainly let me know your answer there to that very good question down below. But I want to talk to you about something that was said before the game by Rafael Yuste, of course, the vice president at Barca. He openly came out and said... I hope and wish that Xavi continues here because we are thinking about a long-term project with him and not just one or two seasons. We are all going to try to convince Xavi, but in the end, it will be up to him. So yet another public comment here, just like Juan Laporta a few days ago from inside of the club saying, we want Xavi to continue. We are actively trying to get him to change his mind. And that's Laporta, Yuste, Deco. They're all privately and publicly trying to convince Chaffee here but even before the game again guys Chaffee came out and said nothing has changed even despite the great support even despite the real show of confidence from inside of the club he has said that his decision is indeed final and I do think we have to be careful right now because I would just say on this no matter what you make of Chaffee as a coach no matter what Barca go on to do in this current season we need to be careful because if he is not feeling it if he's not having the energy the motivation the drive anymore to coach Barca, we shouldn't put pressure on him. We shouldn't try and force him here to change his mind if he doesn't feel up to it. Because at the end of the day, that's a recipe for disaster. In order to take on the Barca job, in order to apply yourself every single day, you've got to be ready. You've got to have the energy. You've got to have that maximum desire. And it might be the case here, by the way, guys, that what we're seeing now over the past few weeks is Chavi putting everything into his final few months of the job. You might be seeing a man here who is ultimately looking to the end, but wanting to finish in the best way, wanting to have a great Champions League run, feeling as though I want to bow out on a high. This is how I want to leave. And if he's made his choice, at the end of the day, if that is really what he wants, we've got to allow him to make his own decision. We shouldn't be putting too much pressure on a man here who may indeed feel as though he needs a break. And that would be understandable at Barca. Because one of the problems that Xavi really has had to suffer at the club with, and certainly something that would have given him many, many sleepless nights, I'm sure, it's the injury problems. But actually, right now, we've got good news. We have actual good injury updates coming today. Because on Araujo, first of all, just want to clarify here, there's no problem with him. He simply missed the game against Las Palmas because of a precaution. They don't want to overplay him. They don't want to sort of put too many demands on Araujo. We know that he has had several muscle injuries in the past, so they want to make sure that he's absolutely right for PSG, and he will be. He will start and be ready for that game. But also, guys, Andreas Christensen didn't play yesterday, but he's also going to be fine because the good news on him is that he trained today without any problems whatsoever. He had some there pain in his Achilles, but he is also going to be ready to play against PSG. He'll come back into that midfield and really help with defensively solidifying things. But the good news doesn't stop there because we've also got to talk about Frank de Jong. And this is another player here who I regularly get questions about. Lots of people wondering, is he going to be back in time? What's happening with Frankie? Thank you very much here for the super thanks coming in on that and it's looking very likely right now that he's also going to be fine for that PSG first leg. He has an extended break now, no games coming up, he's got lots of time now to be back and ready for that game, and he's on track. He is expected to be back and return in time for the first leg, which is terrific news, by the way, that it would be to have Frankie back. And then there's Pedri, because apparently even he right now is ahead of schedule. The club are absolutely delighted, apparently, with how Pedri's recovery is going, with how he's looking. We've already seen him return there to the field in his recovery and the club's medical staff are really, really pleased for him. Now, right now, the first leg against PSG, it may still be beyond his reach. At this point, nobody's ruled him out of anything, but it might still be too soon. But we are looking right now on Pedri at the second leg against PSG and indeed the Classico. That's all happening in the same week. And it's just really good. He's looking really good here. Araujo's fine. Christensen is going to be fine. Frankie de Jong is all good and even Pedri going to be back there ahead of schedule. Come on, let's have a party. This is looking very, very positive right now. But the big thing that I am wondering about right now from all of you guys is... 
with our next game being PSG, building up to that game now. How are you feeling? What are the emotions like? What are the expectations like from the fan base ahead of that all-important first leg? And like I say right here on the channel, we are going to be talking every single detail about that upcoming game. We are going to leave no stone unturned. It's all going to be happening here. I cannot wait to get started on that build-up, and I can't wait for all of you guys to join me on that. So thank you indeed today for getting involved with the video, for all of the support coming in, and for ultimately looking forward to Barca matches with me here on the channel. I will see you soon with lots more coming and big times ahead. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a good one, guys. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Barca. Uh -huh.